Hey YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to the Zuck walkthrough. So in the last couple of weeks with Necromancy, I have done a lot of testing at Zuck because there have been an influx of players that want access to the Necromancy Zuck Cape, or really any Zuck Cape. The Necromancy Zuck Cape boosts the Death Skull's ability massively, turning it from an ability that isn't really worth the adrenaline into the backbone of your entire damage output rotation. And because of that, well, a lot of people have been struggling to get their first cape. So in this video, I have figured out what I believe to be the easiest, most simple, lowest actions per minute, least strategically inclined method to get yourself a Zuck Cape. So first off, how do you get a Zuck Cape? You have to complete normal mode Zuck without using the checkpoint system. This means you don't need to do a flawless run, but in this video, I also did get a flawless run, which will unlock access to hard mode. The difference between the normal mode cape and the hard mode cape isn't really anything. The hard mode cape combines all four of them into one, so it saves you some bank space, but in terms of functionality, they're exactly the same. And the thing that I really like about this method is it's basically setup based as opposed to being kind of skill or rotation based. So you'll notice I'm using a revolution bar. I actually end up doing this full set cape without using any food. And for the majority of it, I'm not even using protection prayers or anything. My revo bar is doing its thing and my setup is basically the thing that is carrying me through this entire thing. So first off, what is that setup? I'm combining a Hellhound and the Aegis Aura. Both of them offer damage reduction to the point that it makes it really, really difficult to die, even if you make a ton of mistakes or even tank mechanics on purpose. In addition to this, I'm using the tier 90 Necromancy tank gear. You could do this with the tier 70 or the tier 80. I have tried it with both, but I'm using the tier 90 because when you're going for a Zuck Cape, you may as well do the tank path and have your tier 90 weapons as well as the tank gear. Outside of that, for the setup, I'm wearing an Ammo to Souls. I have any cape on that is not a Zuck cape, of course. And then I'm using the Tuckle Zo Ring. In my invent, there's one thing that is incorrect about the setup, but the rest of the run is perfect, so I'm not going to redo the whole run. But what I want you to do is I want you to remove those spiritual prayer potions from the top right and replace them with Super Restorers. Other than that, we should be completely and utterly good to go. And of course, you do not need 37,000 Vaughn Bombs. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to play this back at 1.5x speed. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cast the Darkest Incantation. It now lasts for 12 minutes, so it's even easier, and let's get into it. Okay, so the fun thing about this setup is I'm actually going to be using the exact same save spot for every single wave. So it's basically the southeast corner, and I'm just going to stand here for the entire thing, and my Revo Bar is going to do all the work. Uh, when things are around me, I'm going to be targeting the bats first, and then outside of that, it is quite literally whatever you want. I'm going to camp Soul Split, I've got Auto Retaliate on, and my Ghost and my Skeleton combo are basically going to handle the rest. Whenever anything gets stuck, you might need to move a tiny little bit to shake things loose, but for the most part, I'm just starting every single wave in the exact same location, and you don't even have to move. Like, this is really as simple as making sure you're keeping your potions up and your boosts up, and yeah, you're going to notice this is extremely chill. Like, I, I'm very confident this is the easiest way to get a Zuck Cape uh, to exist. So now we're on to wave two, kind of the exact same deal. Uh, the one thing you want to look at when you're doing this setup, uh, you shouldn't have to worry about your HP. The ghost is going to have your back. Um, as for your Rebo Bar, you want to copy exactly what I have here, which is Skeleton first, Ghost second, and then it's just your two currencies that you get, which are uh, Soul Sap and Touch of Death. And other than that, uh, yeah, you're going to see Revo is just taking control and doing everything it needs to. The one thing you do want to look out for when you're doing this is the Hellhound. The Hellhound has HP and he takes damage for you. So you may have to heal him a couple times during this run. Uh, so in order to do that, all you have to do is either do a Prism of Restoration. I'll put the runes that it requires on screen. Or alternatively, you can just use the Hellhound scrolls. You can use whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the one thing you actually have to monitor and pay attention to. But as you'll see here, I'm not taking damage. Like, even when I'm getting a hit, it's less than 10% of my life points. So this really is the cleanest, uh, easiest way to go about this. There are points where I want to step a little bit further south just to, you know, get better access to some of the mobs. But this is really it. It lures everything for you and you just sit here, let the Revo Bar do its thing. And obviously you could do a faster Zuck run if you wanted manual inputs. And I'm not suggesting that you don't. But for the easiest, most simple Zuck Cape on the planet, this is kind of the approach you're going to take. Okay, we're now at the first challenge wave, which is wave four. For wave four, the slight difference is you're going to get three meleeers that spawn, and the deal with them is they have to be stunned before you can do full damage to them. So what I would advise for this is you're going to have souls stacked up because your Revo Bar will have given you three, and what you want to do is you want to use the Soul Strike ability. It's my Y keybind on my top action bar, and it's highlighted right now. You're going to want to use that on each of the meleeers for this entire run, uh, so all we're going to do is we're going to stun him. We're going to get a pop-up saying that he's been stunned. And you'll be able to tell because the bar under his head will be completely empty upon being stunned. And other than that, it's the exact same deal. 
We're gonna click on the second igneous one. I'm gonna stun him and then back to the Revo bar doing all of the work. Now we're gonna go over to the third one and it's the exact same deal. I'm gonna use Soul Strike. He's been stunned and now I'm gonna continue using my Revo bar. So this is a point where there's technically a bit of a DPS check. Now that we've killed the three igneous monsters, we're heading over to Zuck's feet. And then whenever you hit your special action button, which is highlighted on screen, what's going to happen is we're going to have a short window of time to deal 50,000 damage to Zuck. There are a couple ways to approach this. The first thing I'll say is you don't actually have to complete this in one cycle. It will not cost you a Zuck cape or a flawless run if you repeat this challenge wave as many times as you need to. That being said, it's a really good opportunity to try using some of your necromancy abilities. We've got a ton of necrosis stacks and a ton of souls, so it is actually going to be very easy to finish this cycle without a whole lot of effort. And in order to do that, all we're going to do is upon hitting our special action button, we're just going to spend all of our currencies that we've saved up. So I'm going to use Volley of Souls, and then I'm also going to use my Death Guard special attack. So as you can see here, I'm just letting my Revo Bar build me up to full, and now I'm going to press my special action button. Upon pressing it, that's my Death Guard special attack, Volley of Souls, and it's basically done just like that. Now heading into the challenges. The challenges are going to be extremely simple uh, in this Zuck Cape run because we have something called Threads of Fate. Once again, if you want just a Zuck Cape, you don't need to do this flawlessly, so you can choose to fail the challenge and it won't really matter. But if you do want to pass the challenge, activate Threads of Fate as soon as you can, and then all I'm doing here is I'm using Finger of Death twice. And it quite literally kills the entire challenge. Okay, and now heading into wave six, guess what? We're gonna go to the exact same safe spot we were in before, but this time around, we've got a Jad. The only time I'm doing any real prayer flicking in this entire run is for the Jads, because if you tank them, they do hit you quite hard. They can hit you about 7,000 damage if you're face tanking the Jad hits, which I would not totally recommend. And now it's the same deal. I've got Soul Split on, and we're just chilling, letting my ghost heal me up like crazy, and we've got really nothing to worry about. It's the same save spot, and we're just gonna keep powering along in the suck run. Heading into wave seven, it's exactly the same deal. One other thing I'm gonna note about this save spot is if you try to attack when you're one tile north from where I currently am, it's actually gonna run you all the way north and out of the safe spot. So you need to make sure you're actually south and standing in the little lowered area that you can attack over. Otherwise, it's just gonna run you out of the safe spot and you'll take a little extra damage. Not immensely important, but it's good to note because I know some people have had issues in the past actually getting into the safe spot and properly using it. But yeah, once you're here, should have a very easy time. You're going to notice in wave 7 I start to take a little bit of damage. This would be a good moment to use your enhanced Excalibur or potentially just eat a little bit of food. You should be completely fine though and you don't have a whole lot to worry about. But yeah, did want to note this is one of the few waves where I did actually take some damage and my HP got ever so slightly lower. Once again, we're still not using any prayers, we're still just camping soul split, and we're going to survive no problem at all. Heading into wave 8, very much more of the same. I know this gets quite a bit repetitive, but uh, it really is that easy, and it's repetitive because we're using the same strategy for every single wave to hopefully make it as easy as humanly possible. The trick with these rangers is every time they plant their feet and they hit you, they start to deal more damage than the last time. So moving around just a little bit to make them all walk will actually reset all of their stacks. That's a really good piece of advice if the rangers start hitting you like two, 3,000 damage per shot, it means they've had their feet planted for a little bit too long. So as you can see here, this one has 200 stacks. You can actually see it on its icon. Um, 200 is a whole lot. So because it's only one, I'm just gonna keep it where it is. But alternatively, if you can make him move ever so slightly, he'll be doing a whole lot less damage. Okay, and now we are heading in to wave nine. For wave number nine, you're gonna get three igneous rangers. And for the rangers, you have to use a powerful ability on them to make them vulnerable. And the ability I'm using in this case is I'm just using finger of death on each of them. So I use finger of death and now he's gonna stop healing and I can do full damage to him. I've also elected to throw on my deflect range prayer for this one just because there are so many rangers that spawn in and we're not actually trying to kill all of them. You only have to kill the three igneous ones, so it seems like a slightly better idea to just throw the prayer on and we have a little bit less to worry about. This final igneous mob is one that I actually forgot to use a powerful ability on and because of that you're going to notice that it was healing the whole time. You can actually kill it through it though because your conjures are so powerful, but I wouldn't advise it. Much better to use finger of death if you can. And it's the same as before with the challenge wave. We're going to volley of souls. We're going to death guard special attack. And it should be pretty much phased just like that. Soon as we get it to 500k, we're going to get our next challenge. And for this challenge, you get the unbreakable mob. And this guy, usually when you're not using necromancy, is quite difficult because he has really high defense, which means you can't hit him. But when you're using necromancy, there's a damage potential accuracy calc instead. And what this means is that you will actually not ever splash no matter what. So even though my hit chance on him is only 77%, what this means is all of my attacks are gonna hit, 
but they're only gonna be 77% of the amount of damage they otherwise would be. So for this part, it's quite simple. Use abilities that hit hard if you wanna complete this challenge. So good examples are your Death Guard Special, Finger of Death, and Volley of Souls. Any of those should clear it out, no problem at all. You could also use Soul Scythe, but your Conjurers probably won't do a whole lot of damage. To take him out there, I just used Finger of Death twice. And now, to the exact same safe spot as before for Wave 11. This one has two Jads, but for all of the remaining Jad Waves, this safe spot is actually gonna lure them all perfectly so they can't attack you. We're gonna start by clearing off all of the mobs, and as soon as the mobs have been taken out, we're then gonna head over to the Jad himself. I am gonna tank a Jad hit here in a second just to show you how much damage it hits. It's about 7,000, which feels like a lot of damage, but you have to remember, I have 15,947 base life points right now. What that means is you could actually tank over two of these without even having to worry about it. And then after tanking that Jad hit, I'm just gonna use Resonance and my HP is back to full. Same thing as before, we're gonna go back to trusty old safe spot on the southeast corner, and we're just gonna chill here with Soul Split Up, and it continues. And as you can see, you're probably understanding the, the trend and the theme of this whole run is very, very low manual input. All I'm really doing is clicking on stuff, and my Conjurers and my Skeleton, my Ghost, are doing so much damage that they're basically clearing this entire Zuck Cape for me. It's honestly so ridiculous at this point that my Ghost probably deserves the Zuck Cape more than I do at this point. But uh, we're now heading into wave 13. Waves 12 and 13 are known as the hardest two waves in a Zuck run, and they can be seen as very difficult. But as long as you break up the mobs so you're not tanking 20 things at once, which this safe spot in this lure does, uh, you're going to end up not taking that much damage, and it's actually going to be an amount that the Ghost is going to let you pretty much overheal. Something you do have to worry about, though, is there might be times where you notice your HP gets a little bit low, and you'll notice that your Ghost is actually stuck behind a wall. If you can find a way to drag your Ghost out, and get it unstuck, that will be a very helpful thing. The devs did say there is a patch coming for this because the ghosts in the Conjurer's path really, really well out of combat, but in combat at times, they get a little bit lost. Uh, so yeah, if you do notice randomly that your life points are dropping dramatically, it's probably because your ghost needs to be attacking in order to heal you. Anyway, continuing with wave 13, there isn't really a whole lot special about this one at all. We're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep dealing damage with our Revo bar. And uh, yeah, just like that, we're gonna be at our final challenge wave. After the challenge wave, we've got Harakin and then Zuck to take on. And then after that, we are going to have our first ever Zuck Cape. For the challenge wave 14 in normal mode, you're going to get three mages. For the mage, all you have to do is stand within its shield bubble and do some damage to it. As soon as you do that, the shield will then break and you'll be able to kill it properly without him healing. So as you can see, it says your attack has lowered the barrier surrounding the mage. It's now vulnerable. So we're just gonna go all the way through, all three of them. I do elect to pray deflect magic on this wave once again because we've got all these mages attacking me and I also don't plan on killing any of them. So we're not really breaking up this wave. We're just gonna pray mage and deal with it. There we go, third one is dealt with. And now I'm gonna do something slightly different here. For the third challenge wave, you wanna be 100% adrenaline for it so you can use barricade. So what I'm gonna do is before clicking my special action button, I'm actually just gonna wait and let my Revo bar build me up to closer to full adrenaline. Once I've got a little bit more adrenaline, I'm now gonna press my special action button and that way I know that I'm gonna have the adrenaline I need for the challenge. And there we go, special action button has been pressed. My Death Guard actually hit a 30K there, which is pretty ridiculous. And then it's just Death Guard spec, Volley of Souls, and the challenge is done. At this point, I'm now full adrenaline once again. And all we're gonna do here is I am gonna use Barricade with Bone Shield. If your barricade doesn't last long enough for this, you can also use Resonance or Disruption Shield, or you could use Devotion and Flick Your Prayers for this challenge. But once again, you don't even need your Flawless Run to get the Zuck Cape. So if you fail this challenge, it is not a big deal. Yeah, barricade, by far the easiest method. And then for Wave 16 and the Triple Jad, we're going to the exact same spot that we've always been at. Um, I encountered something really weird here. Uh, this is something called Rubber Banding that's about to happen. What Rubber Banding is, is it's when a character's model appears somewhere, but the character's actual position is somewhere different. So I'm going to say something, and it's not going to make sense, and then you're going to see it. So that Jad that is in the middle of my screen right now is not actually in the middle of my screen. He's actually right next to my character. And you're going to notice in a second, I'm actually going to take a melee swipe from across the map. Uh, just a note that this is something that does happen with a certain few monsters in the game, and Jads are one of those monsters. So if you do get rubber banded and you're getting melee swiped, just continue to move back and continue to retreat. And what will happen is within a few seconds, its position vector will actually catch up. Sometimes that'll happen via it moving, and sometimes the monster will just straight up teleport. But you'll see this. That is a melee swipe from across the map, and I should not be in melee range. Um, but yeah, you'll see in a second it actually catches up, and I just keep stepping back, and we're all good. 
That's JAD1. Heading over to JAD2, exactly the same deal. Are gonna be using our overheads for this part. And then over to JAD the third. Once the third Jad dies, you're gonna get a Heartaken. He's gonna spawn either to the east or to the west. You can deal with him in as many cycles as you'd like, but generally speaking, if you can get him down in one, that's even better. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna head south and we're just gonna wait for him to spawn. He's gonna spawn up on the west side and you can also notice a yellow dot on your minimap. That's a really good way to tell when he spawns a little bit earlier or if you have a smaller screen. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to him and we're gonna attack him. One thing I did there on my way over to Harakin is I used the Deathmark spell. Deathmark is extremely strong against boss monsters because what it's going to do is at any point if Haraken gets below 30,000 life points, he's just going to instantly die. And now we are back to using our Revo Bar. It is worth noting here that you can actually fire manual abilities and I would say it's not a terrible idea to you. It's not absolutely paramount that you do so, but if you do want to save yourself some time, do basically the same thing that you did on the Zuck Challenge waves. So use your Death Guard special attack. When you have three souls, use Volley of Souls. And when you have Necrosis stacks, use Finger of Death. I'm not using any ultimate abilities for this entire Zuck run, so we don't have to worry about any real rotations, but it's just when you have stacks for things, you may as well spend them. So there's the Volley of Souls. And all you're really looking out for here is on the north and south sides of Harakin, you've got these little bubbling lava pits. And whenever they explode, you want to move your character two tiles. That's the only thing that's actually important for the Zuck run, because if you get hit by these, you get your adrenaline drained, and it's very annoying. So really, all I'm doing is I'm not even looking at Harakin, I'm just looking to the north and the south of him, and whenever anything shoots out, just move a little bit. And just like that, the death mark is activated, and we've actually one-cycled Harakin predominantly with this Revo bar. Okay, so there's one more note I wanted to add here, which is that there's an additional mechanic to the Harakin fight if you can't kill him in one singular cycle. If you end up two-cycling, while he's submerged in normal mode, you'll get a pop-up on your screen that says Harakin is bombarding you. It's super easy to deal with, and I'll explain it in just a second, but I did want to note that you won't see this mechanic if you one-cycle it, but if you're not able to one-cycle it, that's completely okay. I figured I would equip you with what to do when you see this pop-up. Uh, this is from a hard mode run. In hard mode, it happens constantly throughout the entire Harakin fight, but in normal mode, it will only be after that first cycle once Harakin is submerged. So what will happen is he will submerge himself for about a minute, and while he's underground, this will happen one singular time. Uh, when it happens, all you have to do is look at your minimap, and it's basically going to form a massive X on the ground in your current location. The easiest way to avoid it is so long as you're moving directly north, south, east, or west, uh, it should miss you completely. And all you have to do is move three tiles. But yeah, as you can see, it's just a massive cross um, of damage. This shouldn't kill you if it hits you, but basically, if you are taking damage, you just want to move. But yeah, that's just a very quick note on one additional mechanic that you may encounter in your Zuck run. Another way to deal with it as well, if you don't feel like looking at your minimap and like properly being like, wait, I need to go north or south or east or west, uh, if you just move and move far, you'll be fine. Just go to the other side of the arena, shouldn't have to worry about it. Once Harakin is done, it's actually time to take on Zack. And remember at the beginning, I said that you want to have super restores instead of spiritual prayer potions? This is why. Zack has a series of attacks that will lower your maximum life points. And the best way to combat them if you don't want to do the mechanics properly is simply to drink a super restore, and it will completely restore your maximum life points. It's kind of a cheese strategy, but it is extremely viable for what we're currently doing. So, let's get on to Zuck, and let's start attacking him. It's worth noting, you can also death mark Zuck, but you have to do it once he's attackable towards the end of the run. If you do it on the earlier waves, it just won't appear. You can tell when he's death marked because there's a little icon on his debuff bar. And now, it is time for the actual Zuck fight. For the Zuck fight himself, I'm just standing in one place. Uh, as you can see, you can actually soul split camp, and he's only going to hit less than 2,000 every single time. So if you want to soul split camp, you can. If you want to use prayers, you can. If you want a prayer flick, you can. It is completely up to you, but you shouldn't really need a ton of food either way. Also, at this point, you shouldn't have consumed much food, so if you do need to eat some food for this, you're more than welcome to. And once again, the same as before, I'm not using any ultimate abilities. All I'm doing is spending my stacks, but I did test it out just using full Revo and zero manual inputs, and it did work completely well, just a little bit slower. And I generally, I like to teach, you know, using things a little bit. And I think this is a reasonable amount of APM for a Zuck Cape. But yeah, if you want to ignore that, you are more than welcome to. So for the first Zuck mechanic, he's going to say, you will break beneath me. And when that happens, you want to use the freedom ability. If you don't, you're going to get a little bit of a sear, it's going to be a bleed, it's going to do some damage. Not so much that with this setup you'll have to eat or anything, but it's still a good mechanic you want to avoid. The next mechanic is when Zuck will say suffer, and there are two ways of dealing with it. 
The first way to deal with it is to cover a bunch of tiles. You can do this by surging and then running back to your original location. And then the other way of dealing with it that we'll show a little later on in this run is you just stand in place and drink a super restore. Those are your two options. Uh, and if it were me and I'm going for the easiest suck cape ever, I would probably elect to actually not move here and just stand in place. But I'm actually gonna surge and clear it the way you're technically supposed to. And there we go. I have surged, I have moved, and I should have my maximum health back to where it should be. It is also worth noting here that I don't have super restores, so tanking a mechanic that lowers your max HP when you don't have a super restore isn't the best idea. So to combat this, bring a super restore. Don't be like me. The next special attack is fall before my might. And when Zuck does this, he's actually gonna take his swords and he's gonna put a bunch of indentations in the ground on a 180 degree arc from wherever your current location is. The easiest way to deal with this is just to surge. If you quite simply just surge, it should put you in a safe area. But the thing to look out for is typeless hits. If you notice that wherever you're standing, you get hit by a bunch of typeless damage, well, you're gonna wanna move your location. And as you can see, I'm not being hit by anything, so I can just continue standing where I am. The final mechanic that Suck has is he will say die. And at this point, he is gonna drop a big rock on your head. You can use resonance or disruption shield on it, or you can quite simply ignore it because it will only do about 4,000 damage, and we are currently sitting on 17,000 life points, assuming you brought a super restore. And at this point, we just continue to attack Zuck. I'm letting my Revo Bar do all the work, and the one thing I'm looking out for here is I do want to save my souls. The next thing that's coming up is pizza time, and this is part of the Zuck fight that is very daunting for newer or less experienced players because it's a bit of a DPS check, and if you can't do enough damage, you will get insta-killed. But we're going to show you how to do this the easy way. Zuck is gonna say flames consume you. And at this point, if you can, you wanna use the freedom ability. There's a stun here and you're gonna be a little bit slower to start your pizza time if you don't freedom that stun. I'm gonna use freedom and then I'm gonna move all the way north. And at this point, you're gonna see a set of igneous mobs spawning one at a time. You get a melee first, a ranger second, and a mage third. And the way to deal with them is exactly the same as you did in the challenge wave. So the first thing we're gonna do with this igneous mob is we're gonna use Soul Strike because he needs to be stunned before he will take full damage. So I'm gonna use Soul Strike just like that. And then I'm gonna use Finger of Death and then I'm back to my Rebo Bar. And we killed him way faster than we needed to. We actually had probably three times that amount of time to take him out. So then I'm just gonna continue building on Zuck. As soon as the pizza disappears, we're gonna go up to our next slice, which is gonna be on the Southeast corner. And that's where a Ranger is gonna spawn. For this ranger, we have to use a powerful ability on him in order to be able to deal full damage, and I am going to elect to use Finger of Death. So there's the Finger of Death, and now we can go back to using our Revo Bar, and our Revo Bar is going to finish him off with my Conjures and absolutely nothing else. And once again, we have taken him out well before the DPS window has ended. And then third and last, we've got the Mage. The Mage is extremely easy to take out, and you don't need to do anything special, so I'm going to let Revo do the work, and I'm actually just going to build a Dren and build all my stacks while Revolution and my Conjures finish killing off this Mage. It's also worth noting that if you have to stay a little bit longer in the area that's fire, you can just pray magic and you'll be able to tank for a good little bit. It's not advisable to have to stand in the fire pizza, but if you do for a couple seconds, it's not the end of the world. The other thing I'm going to note too is if you're slower killing the mobs, you can still move to the next slice and whatever mob you're currently fighting will actually follow you. So for example, if I hadn't killed the ranger in time, I can head over to the mage and the ranger is actually going to follow me and then I can continue killing the ranger. But as you can see, we have very easily and effectively finished off pizza time and we haven't run into really any difficulties there. The thing that can go wrong in pizza time is you do not get the special action button until you've killed all three igneous mobs. As soon as you kill them all, it says your body fills with igneous energy and your special action button will appear on screen. I have highlighted it here. Now, what Zuck's going to do after a certain amount of time is he is going to start charging up a powerful attack. He's going to say flames unending, and then at this point, there's a little bar under his head. It's an adrenaline bar just like yours. When it reaches 100%, he is going to instantly kill you, and it's actually a hard type insta-kill, so it'll kill you through a sign of life and everything. Basically, it's going to end your Zuck run completely. So that gives you an idea of how much time you have to complete pizza time. Uh, with this setup, there's more than enough time to complete it, but that is something that a lot of people have difficulty with for their first Zuck run. If you waste too much time or lose too much time getting to each slice, you can actually end up getting insta-killed. But as you can see, we've got our special action button, and as soon as you click the special action button, it will disrupt the attack, and you're able to continue fighting Zuck.
Once we've interrupted the attack, Zuck is gonna just go through the exact same mechanics as before. He just cycles them repeatedly for as many cycles as you need to finish off the fight. You're gonna start with a Yule Break beneath me, and once again, we are gonna freedom it. The one thing that can happen a little bit differently at Zuck is whenever Zuck gets below 100,000 life points, instead of continuing to go through his attack rotation as before, he's actually gonna restart at the beginning of his set. So what that means is he did a Yule Break beneath me and a Seer, and then instead of doing the sword attack that puts all the indentations in the ground, if you get him to 100,000 life points, he's gonna restart the pattern with another Yule Break beneath me. So as you can see for the Seer, we're gonna move a little bit. We've dodged the Seer, and now because we've got it to 100,000 life points, we're gonna get another Yule Break beneath me. This generally is actually a good thing because it means if you get him to 100,000 life points or below, you're actually gonna have more time before the next pizza time. Pizza time is the most stressful point of the Zuck run, so if you can minimize the amount of times you have to go through it, well, that's just easier for you. One other thing I'm gonna note here is the Tockle Zo Ring is extremely important for this method. It's extremely powerful because you get an additional 10% damage against Tazars. It doesn't work against Zuck, but it does work against all of the mobs in the waves, including the three Igneous mobs during the pizza phase. And because of this, it is the best ring for this method, assuming you don't want to do ring switchscape, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you don't want to do. So with all that said, all we're going to do now is we're going to cruise to the finish line on this Zuck run. And as soon as you get him below 30,000 life points, He's death marked and he's dead. And that is a 20 minute and 55 second flawless normal mode Zuck run with very limited actions per minute, very limited everything. And hopefully this video helps you get your first ever Zuck cape. I'm also gonna mention that this method works in a very similar way for hard mode as well. So if you're someone that wants to get the hard mode cape and would like me to make a video on that too, I'm absolutely down for that. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you get your first ever Zuck Cape. And the last thing I want to say is just a quick thank you for all the support on the sort of lower level, early game catered content that we've been making on this channel last little bit. You've got so many new players coming to RuneScape and I just want to be here and help you all out because I know that getting started in this game can be extremely daunting. Yeah, with that said, hopefully this video was helpful. Feel free to leave a like, comment, all that good stuff if you want to do that. Subscribe and I will see you all very soon for another video.